I want to point out on batteries, there's some ratings here that you should be aware of. You have what they call cold cranking amperage and cranking amperage. Now, these two ratings are an indication of the battery's capacity to deliver amperage at certain temperatures. Now, the CA or cranking amperage is tested at a temperature of zero degrees Celsius. And that one is not really one that I worry about too much, the cranking amperage. I'm more concerned about the cold cranking amperage, which is more of a rating to give you an indication of how it's going to perform at cold temperatures. Now, this one's 650 cold cranking amperage. It's tested at minus 18 degrees Celsius. So remember that one. Look at what your ratings are in your car before you buy a new battery and try to replace it with the one recommended for it. Okay, we're looking at a cutaway of a lead acid battery. Now you can see how these batteries are constructed inside. A battery has a number of cells. A 12 volt battery would have six cells and each cell produces 2.1 volts per cell for a combined total voltage of 12.6 volts when it's fully charged. This is a serviceable battery. And then as the battery's first filled up with acid for the first time there on after, we can fill it with distilled water, but we're gonna fill the acid level up in the battery to about a centimeter above the plates to about the bottom of that well over there. And you can see how the battery inside looks. There's a bunch of stacked lead plates separated by insulators. Half of those plates are negative plates and half the plates are positive plates. All the negative plates are bonded to a joining strip that goes clean across and joins up to the negative side. All the positive plates are then joined up to the positive side. So every second plate is negative, every second plate is positive. And basically, when we have a acid in here, sulfuric acid, reacting with the plates, it produces voltage. As we use it, and we take out some of the charge in the battery, that acid becomes closer to water. So there's a reaction going on constantly between acid being converted back to water, and as we charge it, it goes from water back to acid. Now, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, there's a sulf, uh, sulfate molecule in combined with water. The H2SO4 splits to H2O and SO3, which combines with the lead plates. And there's a sulfation process that goes on on the lead plates. When we charge the battery, the sulfate comes off of the plates, goes back into the suspension into the acid, and forms sulfuric acid again. So that's always a back and forth reaction occurring in the, in the battery. Now, as batteries age, the process of going from sulfuric acid back to water and the sulfate being attached to the lead plates. Normally when the battery is healthy, the sulfate can come back off the plates, go back into the suspension of the electrolyte, form sulfuric acid. It can go back and forth between water and sulfuric acid. When a battery gets older and there's so many chemical reactions occurring on those plates over time, that sulfate does not want to come back off the plate. It doesn't want to go back in the suspension. So when we have a battery that doesn't release the sulfate, we call it a sulfated battery. And those batteries will then start producing weaker acids inside. They start losing the ability to create a chemical reaction. And those batteries at that point need to be replaced. So the terminals on these are in pretty good condition. They're not really that dirty, but we're gonna demonstrate how to clean a battery if it is dirty. So there's your positive and your negative. By the way, look for the big post to pick out the positive and a small post to pick out the negative. They're slightly different in size. And be aware of the positive and negative symbols on batteries. Now, to take a battery post off to clean it, it's pretty simple. Just loosen off the, the nuts on there. And I always start with the negative first. And just in case you touch the frame of the car, you're not gonna get an arc. Now this little tool is a special removal tool. Now if they're tight, this is a real saving grace. It really saves your clamps from getting damaged. It also saves your battery post from, from getting damaged. Never hit on the battery with a hammer or, or pry on them in such a way that you could uh, do structural damage to the battery. Now what we're gonna do here when you get a battery that has got acid around. Now this one's fairly clean, but you can get a product called battery acid neutralizer, which is essentially a, a strong base. It's usually it's sodium 
bicarbonate in a suspension of water and this has got a bit of a dye in it to, to show up if you got acid. Now if there was acid that would start frothing up. There's a little bit on there, it's frothing a little bit and you can also froth, spray the clamps. And a little warning on this, if you ever clean a battery without taking the clamps off, you could get yourself in a little bit of a bind because what this stuff likes to do is it likes to dry in there and form a powder between it. And I've seen cars stall on the road after you clean it because they didn't go through the time to take the clamps off. And that little powder as it dries acts as an insulator. So we're going to get a brush and we're going to scrub the top of that battery really good to get all that acid off. You can scrub the post really well in there. Get all around that. Get the entire top of the battery. Now this one's pretty clean, so we're not gonna worry too, too much about the whole battery, but you get the idea. Now, what you also wanna do is clean inside and around the posts if you have one of these. Works great, it really helps clean those posts up really well. It's a special cleaner with an interior brush in there. And you can take the top off and get inside of the clamps and clean that. Now, if you've got a side post battery rather than a top post like I have here, you can use a regular brush on those just like this, clean those and scrub the terminals and the clamp that goes on them. Now, sometimes you'll also have a bunch of corrosion on the side of the clamps. You can clean that up too as well. You don't have to worry about getting that product on your finger either that neutralizer it won't hurt you and if you're in a pinch on a cheap budget you can also use baking soda or water it works just as well mechanics used it for years and once you're all done just take yourself some water and rinse that all off and blow it off Okay, we're going to just blow all that water off. Okay, put the positive on first. Tighten up the positive well. And we're going to leave the negative off until the positive is tight so we don't have a risk of arcing. Now we'll tighten the negative up last and snug up that battery really well. And when you're done, to prevent corrosion, you can use a little petroleum jelly around the battery clamp, like so. And that just prevents the corrosion from clinging to the... You know, what I'm doing here is I'm taking off the top of the battery cell here, there's a little cap on battery. Sometimes batteries are serviceable. They're screw-in caps or they're pull-out caps like this. And I'm only going to do this for one for demonstration, but we can look inside of the cell, never put anything like metallic in there because you could damage the battery. But you want to make sure that the acid level is about, you know, a half an inch or so above the, the plates inside, a centimeter to a half an inch. If you're seeing plates exposed, you can top up the fluid in there with some distilled water. And I recommend distilled water versus... Um, versus non-distilled water. This is a little filler cap with distilled water on it. And I will put some water in there until I see it about a centimeter above the plates to a half inch above the plates. I don't wanna see the water rise in the well. There's a little tube going down, but just to the bottom of that tube and you're good. And then you can put your caps back on, go through all the cells, make sure they're properly filled up. And then that battery is serviced as far as fluid goes. It's simple to do a open circuit test, checking for voltage at the battery whenever everything is off. You're gonna sit with your key off, touch your black probe to the negative side of the battery and your red probe to the positive side of the battery, then read your voltage. You wanna see the battery very close to 12.6 volts for conventional batteries, 12.8 volts for AGM batteries, glass mat batteries. The further it falls away from the ideal voltage of 12.6, it's an indication that the battery is losing its ability to maintain its full capacity. Now, we may not necessarily get rid of a battery if it's falling below that. Now, quite often I don't worry about them too much uh, once they start falling below 12.4 volts 
and they start losing the ability to start the car. And I will often make sure I also do a load test before I condemn the battery with just an open circuit voltage test. But if it fails load test as well as open circuit test, then use these as an indication that the battery needs to be replaced. Okay, we're just hydrometer testing a battery here. So we got a hydrometer inserted into the battery cell and we're gonna pull some acid up out of the battery into the hydrometer. We're gonna record how much that float inside raises up on that specific cell. Now this one's raising up to about 1.25 ohm on this cell. Uh, we should see right around 1.280 to 1.3 zero zero for specific gravity if the battery has a good cell now this may be a little discharged if we charge it and it goes up to that the battery would be good if it can't mean one if it can't maintain 1.280 or in a good range there to 1.300 uh, we have an indication that the battery is getting a little bit weak we're going to show you how to do a battery load test today and we're going to use a, a VAT60 made by Sun load tester. Now, this load tester has a carbon pile inside of it. A carbon pile allows us to give the battery a workout. It's gonna simulate a load on the battery just as your starter would. And We're gonna put the battery under a load at about 50% of the cold cranking amperage that's listed on the battery. Now, you can find cold cranking amperage ratings on top of every battery you have if they've if you have your label left intact. So on this specific battery here, we have a 665 cold cranking amp battery. Now, these batteries should be able to hold half their cranking amperage for 15 seconds and stay above 9.5 volts. That's our test for load testing. And if it can do that, we know the battery is good. If it fails to stay up to 9.5 volts, on 15 seconds of load time that tells us the battery is either discharged or not up to full capacity before we tested it and we need to recharge it or the battery itself if it was fully charged is no longer able to keep up to the task and needs replacements so when you're performing a load test on the battery first thing we're going to do is connect the load tester directly to the battery and this is a dual post battery so we're able to use the top post which is convenient if you have a side post battery it's the same process it's just a little trickier to get them to hold on there we're going to use the inductive amp meter clamp on the positive using the arrow pointing away from the battery following the current flow and then what we're going to do is place that battery under load for 15 seconds we'll turn that up there now we can see we're resting at 12.3 volts on there uh, it's a little lower than I like to see it. Uh, a battery should sit at about 12.6 volts when it's fully charged, but we'll give this battery a little workout and see what we've got going on here. We'll get a little closer. Now, we're gonna actually use that load knob there, and inside of that machine here is a carbon pile with a set of carbon discs. When we turn this knob, it's gonna bring the discs together. There is a battery cable on each side of the carbon pack and when we tighten the carbon pack together, or the carbon pile together, we're gonna to be able to create an amperage load on that battery. So we're gonna load the battery to half the cold cranking amperage. So this has a 650 cold cranking amp capacity, so we're gonna load it to 325 for 15 seconds, and we're gonna watch the voltage. We want it to stay above 9.5 volts when we do that. So the red light is going on, telling us we're under load. We're gonna approximate 325. We have to toggle that back and forth a little bit to hold it approximately there. And we're going to watch that. It's counting down. Counting down nicely. And it's passed. It stayed above 9.5 volts. We had a little low battery at the beginning. It wasn't quite fully up to charge. We started at about 12.25 or 12.3 originally. And, but it held up to the test. We were well above 9.5 volts. So we know that battery is good. If it fell below 9.5 volts under load, that's an indication that we either need to recharge that battery, or if it has been charged and it fails, that we need to replace it. Now, the other thing about this machine, it has the ability to also help us 
diagnose the charging system. So we have a charging system function on that as well. We won't talk about that just now, but we do have the ability to test the alternator out on that, as well as the starting system. We can put the starter under load and measure the amount of amperage draw that that starter is taking when we crank it. Okay, I've got a light load tester here. And compared to the AVR that we used earlier where we put the battery under a 15 second load, we're gonna put this, we're gonna use this tester here and we're gonna put our battery under a 10 second load. It's a lighter load, it only puts 100 amps of load on this particular battery. And because we're putting a lighter load on it, it will not drop the available voltage down as deep. So that's not a problem. The, our uh, machine takes that into consideration. Now, all we're gonna do on this one, really, really simple. There's a little heating coil inside that's gonna send the current by. And when we send the current by, it's gonna cause the voltmeter to drop down because it's gonna use up some of the voltage in the battery. And we're gonna watch how deep it goes down. We wanna stay above 10 volts in this case for 10 seconds. And it should stay in a good range. So we'll count three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 and it's only went down to 11 and three quarter volts so we've got a battery that's holding capacity really well and it's good you can pick these up for usually under 100 bucks